The Word of God has given me to speak today. The Word of God is given me to speak today. Hello, I'm Willie from the Ozarks, and we're ready for our, Sept our October the 3rd lesson of 2022 in A Course in Miracles workbook for students from the original edition, Lesson 276. The Word of God has given me to speak today. Doesn't that come nicely after yesterday's listening lesson? Did you really catch that? God's healing voice protects all things today? Well, if God's healing voice is what protects all things today, then what do we need to be doing? Listening. <laughs> and that's what, the, he's, that's what he tells us yesterday, was to, to uh, seek and hear and learn and understand. Join me in hearing. Well, since we've been listening to God's voice and no more true yesterday, than every day that we're to listen to God's voice, which speaks that ancient lesson, no more true today than any other day. Yet this is the day, it's been chosen as the time when we will seek and hear and learn and understand. Join me in hearing. Okay, so today the word of God has given me to speak. We've been listening. We're just filled with the Word of God. So let it just bubble out. But let there not be any accusations. Because what is the Word of God? What is the Word of God? My Son is pure and holy as myself. <laughs> You've got to see yourself as pure and holy and all your brothers and sisters as pure and holy. We'll, we'll get more into that in our text reading today. So the Word of God has given me to speak. What is the Word of God? My Son is pure and holy as myself. And thus did God become the Father of the Son He loves, for thus was He created. This the Word His Son did not create with Him, because in this His Son was born. Okay, so we got our birth from God's creation, God's thought. So we're not you know, that's, that's the basis of what he calls the authority problem, is thinking that we made ourselves. At least we live our lives in such a way that we think we can plan it and do what we think's best for us. But what we want to learn, learn to do is to live as we were created, as a son, as a creation born of the Father, to do the Father and the Mother God's will. That's our identity. This the word his son did not create, with him because in this his son was born. Let us accept his fatherhood and all is given us. Deny we were created in his love and we deny ourself to be unaware of who we are and who our father is and for what, and for what purpose we have come. You want to not know who what you're here for or who you are? <laughs> well, Deny we were created in his love, and we deny ourselves to be unsure of who we are and who our Father is and for what purpose we have come. And yet, we but need to acknowledge him who gave his word to us in our creation, to remember him, and so recall ourself. Father, your word is mine. And it is this that I would speak to all my brothers who are given me to cherish as my own, as I am loved and blessed and saved by you. What a beautiful prayer. Under the word of God is given me to speak today. Father, your word is mine, and it is this that I would speak to all my brothers who are given me to cherish as my own as I am loved and blessed and saved by you. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all so much for joining me out here uh, in the shade of this, uh, what is that, a uh, post oak behind us, a Quercus stellata. And I've been out today picking blackberry leaves and uh, kind of wanted to show you how I've been doing it. Uh, this blackberry... Uh, 
I, I put on a pair of leather gloves, which I would not recommend because it's tearing the gloves up and they're too expensive to be tearing up. But if you had an old one where you had one hand still good and the other one had holes in it, or if you used a piece of leather and grabbed on, but the idea is just to grab those things with your glove. It's still in the ground. Don't You don't have to pull the plant. I pulled the plant just so I could show you all this. And that's what you would plant, these little crowns down here, by the way, if you did want to transplant some blackberries. Uh, but anyway, what you do is just grab on there and just pull them. And all the leaves will pop off. You'll get a bunch of splinters if you're not careful. You definitely want some good, strong leather between you and your fingers. And, uh, and I've got a whole bucket full of, uh, just nearly a bucket full of blackberry leaves. So anyway, that's I just kind of wanted to show you. And I'm going to take them. I'll put them in paper sacks and dry them. Uh, let's, uh, and, and then... Uh, and then be able to crinkle them up and put them in a jar and use them uh, for all their good values, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. I kind of got ahead of myself. I wanted to read the text first. So let's go take a look in our text reading. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit more about some good uses of blackberry leaves. But before we get to that, let's, like I said, let's look at our text reading. And we're ready for, I want to start in... Uh, paragraph 19. We left off in paragraph 21 yesterday, but let's back up in 19. How just are miracles, for they bestow an equal gift of full deliverance from guilt upon your brother and yourself. Your healing saves him pain as well as you, and you are healed because you wished him well. Catch that. You're healed because you wished him well. Guilt is our is what makes us sick. So what 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 it what clouds our mind and makes us not know. Your healing saves him pain as well as you, and you are healed because you wished him well. This is the law the miracle obeys, that healing sees no specialness at all. It does not come from pity, but from love. And love would prove all suffering is but a vain imagining, a foolish wish with no effects. Your health is a result of your desire to see your brother with no blood upon his hands, nor guilt upon his heart, made heavy with the proof of sin. And what you wish is given you to see. And I've got that line underlined. I mean, <laughs> your health. You want, you want to know how to get health? Well, here's the answer. Your health is a result of your desire. Catch it. Your desire for what? To see your brother with no guilt upon his hands with no blood upon his hands, nor guilt upon his heart, made heavy with the proof of sin. You don't want to prove that they're sinful and you need to protect yourself from their special form of sin. Instead, don't worship that idol. Instead, see that wish for their holiness, desire for their, to see their, 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 their beauty, their, their perfection, um, their holiness, their oneness with your Father, with you. Your health is a result of your desire to see your brother with no blood upon his hands, nor guilt upon his heart, made heavy with the proof of sin, and what you wish is given you to see. The cost of your serenity is this. This is the price the Holy Spirit and the world interpret differently. The world perceives it as a statement of the fact that your salvation sacrifices his. The Holy Spirit knows your healing is the witness unto his and cannot be apart from his at all. As long as he consents to suffer, you will be unhealed. Wow, as long as he consents to suffer, you will be unhealed? We're going to have to look beyond what they think they're saying in the dream and realize that they don't consent to suffer either. They're your holy brother, one with you in holiness. The Holy Spirit knows your healing is the witness unto his and cannot be apart from his at all. As long as he consents to suffer, you will be unhealed. Yet you can show him that his suffering is purposeless and wholly without cause. Show him your healing and he will consent no more to suffer. For his innocence has been established in your sight and his. And laughter will replace your sighs because God's Son remembered that He is God's Son. <laughs> 21. Who then fears healing? 
Only those to whom their brother's sacrifice and pain are seen to represent their own serenity. Listen to that again. Who then fears healing? Only those to whom their brother's sacrifice and pain are seen to represent their own serenity. Their helplessness and weakness represents the grounds on which they justify his pain. The constant sting of guilt he suffers serves to prove that he is slave, but they are free. The constant pain they suffer demonstrates that they are free because they hold him bound. And sickness is desired to prevent a shift of balance in the sacrifice. How could the Holy Spirit be deterred an instant, even less, to reason with an argument for sickness such as this? And need your healing be delayed because you pause to listen to insanity? <laughs> And 22, 23, 24, uh, there's a footnote from the editor down there that says, uh, do not, does not appear in the original manuscript, previously numbered as paragraph 21A through 21C. The content was restored in the 2009 revision from an earlier manuscript from which an entire page had been lost. Starting with the 2012 revision, paragraph 22 through the end of the chapter have been remembered. Okay, so a good footnote. They lost a page in the original manuscript, huh? Correction is not your function. It belongs to one who knows of fairness, not of guilt. Correction is not your function. It belongs to one who knows of fairness, not of guilt. If you assume correction's role, you lose the function of forgiveness. You don't go around telling people they're wrong and then get them to change. Instead, you look beyond the dream and see their holiness, their perfection, their, their, their innocence, their, their son of Godness with you and with God. If you assume correction's role, you lose the function of forgiveness. No one can forgive until he learns correction is but to forgive and never to accuse. No one can forgive until he learns. Correction is but to forgive and never to accuse. Alone you cannot see, they are the same, and therefore is correction not of you. Identity and function are the same, and by your function do you know yourself. And thus, if you confuse your function with the function of another, and that another is capitalized, which is the Holy Spirit, and thus, if you confuse your function with the function of another, you must be confused about yourself and who you are. What is the separation but a wish to take God's function from him and deny that it is his? Yet it is not his. Yet if it is not his, excuse me, yet if it is not his, it is not yours, for you must lose what you would take away. 23. In a split mind, identity must seem to be divided, nor can anyone perceive a function unified which has conflicting, which has conflicting purposes and different ends. Let's read that again. In a split mind, identity must seem to be divided. Nor can anyone perceive a function unified which has conflicting purposes and different ends. Correction to a mind so split must be a way to punish sins you think are yours in someone else. And thus does he become your victim, not your brother, different from you in that he is more guilty thus in need of your correction as the one more innocent than he. This splits his function off from yours and gives you both a different role. And so you cannot be perceived as one and with a single function that would mean a shared identity with but one end. Paragraph 24. Correction you would do must separate correction you would do must separate because that is the function given it by you. When you perceive correction is the same as pardon, 
Then you also know the Holy Spirit's mind and yours are one. And so your own identity is found. Yet must he work with what is given him and you allow him only half your mind. And thus he represents the other half and seems to have a different purpose from the one you cherish and you think is yours. Thus does your function seem divided with a half in opposition to a half. And these two halves appear to represent a split within a self perceived as one. Consider how this self-perception must extend and do not overlook the fact that every thought extends because that is its purpose, being what it really is. From an idea of self as two, there comes a necessary view of function split between the two. And what you would correct is only half the error, which you think is all of it. Your brother's sins become the central target for correction, lest your errors and his own be seen as one. Yours are mistakes, but his are sins, <laughs> and not the same as yours. His merit punishment, while yours in fairness should be overlooked. <laughs> How does the ego reason? <laughs> yours are sin, but mine are just mistakes. No, they're all mistakes. And we need to be merciful to each other and ourselves <laughs> and see that we're all just dreaming a nightmare of uh, the illusion of despair, I think he called it yesterday. <laughs> okay, let's go take a look now in our associated reading with uh, the word of God has given me to speak. The word of God has given me to speak. Be sure to do your longer period of meditation in the morning and then the evening, even if it's just for five minutes. But take a little bit of time. You know, five, he said in one place, didn't he say, five minutes would be the least to give to God, 10 would be better, and 15 better still. And you'll find that when your thoughts calm down and you're able to sit, 30 minutes won't be enough of time to spend with God. But do spend at least five minutes in the morning and in the evening, okay? Uh, how can illusion, but, but follow your heart. Uh, how can illusions, oh, excuse me, not how can illusions satisfy God's son. The word of God has given me to speak. Uh, that was our, when I said, how can illusions satisfy God's son, the wind had blown the page. And that was yesterday, uh, a few days ago. Today, the word of God has given me to speak. And why is the word of God given you to speak? What is the word of God? My son is pure and holy as myself. And you learned that because you had been listening to God's healing voice, which protects all things today. That was yesterday's. So now you have the right or the responsibility, the opportunity, maybe I should say, to share what you've learned with your brothers and sisters, not for the purpose of telling them they're wrong, but for, for reminding them of their holiness and how they share that holiness with you and with, your, with God. What is the Christ? And before we read what is the Christ, let me just tell you a little bit more about blackberries. I got kind of excited about it when I decided that while the leaves were still on, I could pull the leaves off the canes. The canes would still be there to make blackberries next spring because uh, they make it on the flora canes and the prima canes this year. I can pull the leaves off either the flora canes or the prima canes. And the primacanes will be the Florida canes next year, which will make some blackberries. And this late in the fall, I don't think it'll really hurt much to, for them to lose their leaves. And I found this on a, re, a, a website. I'll, I'll give you the actual uh, address in the description below, which I'm, I am writing some stuff there for you if you guys want to go look at it. And it's kind of some recaps on some of the things that we've just talked about and uh, where you can actually get the spelling of some of the words that I've used. And also I've got my email in there. I would love to hear who all's following along. Send me an email. Uh, but this is out of Pharmacognosy Reviews. And, um, and it's talking about the Ruba, Rubus fruticosis, fruticosis, which is the blackberry. And uh, they're widespread in northern countries of the world. It has a lot of medicinal uses. Various blackberry plants are useful in the treatment of cancer, dysentery, diarrhea, whooping cough, 
colitis, toothache, anemia, psoriasis, sore throat, mouth ulcers, and used as a mouthwash, hemorrhoids, and minor bleeding. And uh, that's all in this website, ncbi.nim.nih.gov uh, forward slash PMC forward slash. It's, <laughs> I'll, I'll put it in the description, like I said. So, so anyway, just, you know, get your, get your blackberry leaves. There's, I've just been picking them today so that I can dry them and, and uh, have them through the winter. Okay, now let's take a look at what is the Christ in our associated reading with the Word of God is given me to speak. The Word of God is given me to speak. What is the Christ? Christ is God's Son as He created Him. He is the self we share, uniting us with one another and with God as well. He is the thought which still abides within the mind that is His source. He has not left His holy home nor lost the innocence in which he was created. He abides unchanged forever in the mind of God. Christ is the link that keeps you one with God and guarantees that separation is no more than an illusion of despair. For hope forever will abide in him. Your mind is part of his and his of yours. He is the part in which God's answer lies where all decisions are already made and dreams are over, where all decisions are already made and dreams are over. He remains untouched by anything the body's eyes perceive. For though in him his father placed the means for your salvation, yet does he remain the self who, like his father, knows no sin. Home of the Holy Spirit and at home in God alone, does Christ remain at peace within the heaven of your holy mind? This is the only part of you that has reality and truth. The rest is dreams. Yet will these dreams be given unto Christ to fade before his glory and reveal your holy self, the Christ, to you at last? The Holy Spirit reaches from the Christ in you to all your dreams and bids them come to him to be translated into truth. He will exchange them for the final dream which God appointed as the end of dreams. For when forgiveness rests upon the world and peace has come to every son of God, what could remain to keep things separate? For what remains to see except Christ's face? Wow, we sure want that forgiveness to rest upon the world and peace. For when, peace, or for when forgiveness rests upon the world and peace has come to every son of God, what could remain to keep things separate? For what remains to see except Christ's face? And how long will this holy face be seen when it is but the symbol that the time for learning now is over and the goal of the atonement has been reached at last? So therefore let us seek to find Christ's face and look on nothing else. See Christ's face in all your brothers and sisters. So therefore let us seek to find Christ's face and look on nothing else. As we behold his glory, will we know we have no need of learning or of perception or of time or anything except the Holy Self, the Christ whom God created as his Son. Isn't that just beautiful? And, you know, we read that 10 times for the next 10, for these 10 days. And there's a lot there. Make sure you get it. Read it repeatedly. You don't have to just read it once a day. Read it again if you'd like. Read it many times. Make sure you really get it. Okay, the Word of God has given me to speak today. What is the Word of God? My Son is pure and holy as myself. And thus did God become the father of the son he loves, for thus was he created. This the word his son did not create with him, because in this his son was born. Let us accept his fatherhood, and all is given us. Deny we were created in his love, and we deny ourself. To be unsure of who we are, of who our father is, and for what purpose we have come. And yet we need but to acknowledge him who gave his word to us in our creation, to remember him 
and to recall our self. Father, your word is mine, and it is this that I would speak to all my brothers, who are given me to cherish as my own, as I am loved and blessed and saved by you. The word of God is given me to speak. The word of God is given me to speak.